Edward the Elder was born in 874 to Alfred the Great and his wife Ealswith. Edward was the third of five children, and he had three sisters and one brother. His upbringing was likely influenced by his father's emphasis on education and the arts, and he was probably taught to read and write in both Old English and Latin. In 886, his father Alfred negotiated a peace treaty with the Viking leader Guthrum, which divided England into a Danish-controlled area, the Danelaw, and an Anglo-Saxon area, Wessex. This treaty marked the beginning of a period of relative peace between the Anglo-Saxons and the Vikings, which lasted for several years. In 893, Edward and his father fought against a Viking invasion led by the Danish king Hasten. The Vikings were ultimately defeated, but the conflict highlighted the ongoing threat posed by the Vikings to Anglo-Saxon England. In 897, Edward was appointed as the governor of Kent, a key province in southeastern England. This position gave him experience in both military and administrative matters, which would serve him well later in life. In 898, Edward was involved in negotiations with the Vikings in London, which resulted in the creation of the Treaty of Alfred and Guthrum, which defined the boundaries between Anglo-Saxon England and the Danelaw. This treaty helped to establish a lasting peace between the two sides. After his father's death in 899, Edward succeeded him as King of Wessex. He was immediately faced with the challenge of maintaining the peace with the Vikings, as well as defending his kingdom against possible incursions from other Anglo-Saxon kingdoms. In 902, Edward led an army to drive the Vikings out of Essex and East Anglia. This campaign was successful, and it helped to strengthen Edward's position as king. In 909, Edward led an army to conquer the Viking kingdom of Mercia, which had been created in the Midlands. The conquest of Mercia marked a significant expansion of Edward's power and influence. In 910, Edward was able to take control of the city of Chester, which had been a major stronghold of the Vikings. This victory further solidified Edward's control over much of England. In 911, Edward made peace with the Viking leader Rollo, who was given the province of Normandy in return for his loyalty to the king. This alliance helped to ensure that the Vikings would not pose a significant threat to Edward's kingdom. In 913, Edward led a successful campaign to conquer the Viking kingdom of Northumbria in northern England. This campaign marked another significant expansion of Edward's power and influence. In 918, Edward defeated an alliance of Viking armies at the Battle of Teton Hall, which secured his control over much of England. This victory marked the beginning of a period of relative stability and prosperity in England. In 920, Edward was able to annex the Kingdom of Essex into his own Kingdom of Wessex. This annexation further strengthened Edward's position as king. In 922, Edward led a successful campaign to conquer the Viking Kingdom of York in northern England. This victory marked the end of the Viking threat to Anglo-Saxon England. In 924, Edward died and was succeeded by his son Athelstan as King of England. Edward's reign marked a period of significant expansion and consolidation of power for the Anglo-Saxon monarchy. During his reign, Edward helped to strengthen the Anglo-Saxon monarchy and solidify its control over much of England. He was a skilled military leader and administrator, and he was able to build alliances with other leaders to achieve his goals. Edward was known for his piety and devotion to the Christian faith. He was a patron of churches and monasteries throughout his kingdom, and he encouraged the spread of Christianity among the Anglo-Saxon people. Edward was also known for his support of learning and the arts. He founded schools and monasteries throughout his kingdom, and he sponsored the production of illuminated manuscripts, such as the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle, which recorded the history of the Anglo-Saxon people. Edward was a respected and popular king among his subjects. He was known for his fairness and justice, and he was able to maintain the loyalty and support of his people throughout his reign. Edward's legacy was significant, as his reign marked a period of consolidation and expansion for the Anglo-Saxon monarchy. He helped to establish the foundations of the English state, which would continue to evolve and develop over the centuries to come. His son Athelstan would build upon his achievements, becoming the first king to rule over a united England, and laying the groundwork for the future growth and success of the English nation.